All right, bros, this is the second blaster in the Nerf Rival Curve Shot series. So if you're new to the channel, we've already done the first one, which is the Nerf Rival Flex. And now we have the Nerf Rival Side Swipe. All right, so let's take a look at this. The back of the box says it has 90 FPS velocity. It's bolt action. It's an ambidextrous bolt, which is cool. And it includes 12 rounds. All right, so let's open it up. All right, bros, included with the packaging, you get the blaster, you get an instruction manual, and you get 12 Nerf rival rounds. All right, so let's take a look at the blaster. Now this is much bigger than the Flex, and this looks almost something like a Halo blaster with the shape of this, which I think is pretty cool. Now we're supposed to have a bolt here somewhere. I think I'm missing that because this is bolt action and it's ambidextrous. I can screw it into either side. So it must be somewhere here in the box. I was missing it. It was taped to the side of the box. So here's the bolt that you get as well. And I think it's really cool that Nerf made this ambidextrous because in my opinion, they didn't have to. All right, I think it screws in here without reading the instructions. Yeah, I'm just using my best guess and you have to screw it into one side or the other, whatever side you want it on. And there you go, and it's pretty tight. So here is your muzzle that's movable and helps you curve your rounds. And it again, it kind of clicks into place. And so if you're new to this blaster system, if you turn it to the left, the ball's gonna curve to the left. Same thing for the right. Straight, it just shoots straight. And then if you put it on the bottom, it's gonna curve down. Inside the muzzle is this little rubber piece. And when the round hits it, it causes it to spin, which makes the round curve. Obviously this is the bolt, and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna prime it like this, and then fire. The stock is pretty interesting how it has this little slot right here. It almost looks like something could slide in there. Or maybe it's made to somehow attach a sling to it or something. There aren't any other sling adapters. There aren't any tack rails. And I guess you could kind of consider this a rear sight and a front sight. And it's kind of got a submachine gun feel to it with this stock. Right here is your internal magazine. And then this is the slide door, or I guess you could just call it a slide for your mag. And it looks like you just put the rounds in like this. 11, and it should hold one more. I dropped one of the rounds on the floor here, but that's okay. And then you release it and it looks like it puts, oh. You can actually push it all the way back up and that covers it so the rounds won't fall out. So let's go ahead and prime this blaster. And it's a pretty tough spring to pull back. And then let's go ahead and fire. There you go. And you've got to make sure that the bolt is all the way up or it won't fire just like you saw. So um, this appears like it has pretty good power. Right here they put a front grip and it feels pretty good. All right, bros, this blaster has a safety switch on both sides, one here and one here. On top, the blaster has a ready indicator and that'll let you know when the blaster's ready to fire. When there's nothing there, it's empty and it's dark. And when it's loaded, it's orange. Right here is a reset switch. So in case your blaster gets jammed, you can push that down and you can pull the bolt back so you can release the um, jammed rival round. And one thing also to note is when you load up this blaster, I don't have all the rounds in, so it's easier to show, but if you load up the blaster, and you can see some space in there because I didn't load it all the way, but when you release, it'll push all the balls forward like that, but this little slide is not all the way up and the rounds are exposed. So you can still push this all the way up 
and it kind of closes the door so the rounds won't fall out. All right, so let's go ahead and chrono this blaster. 100.9, 96 96.4, 94 94.5, 99, 97.2, 98, 87. So the low was 88.7, the high was 100.9, and the average was 96.4. Now let's go do some field testing. All right, bros, I'm gonna test the range of this blaster by shooting at that building over there that's about 60 feet away. All right, bros, now I'm gonna test the long distance accuracy of this blaster by shooting at Jackson that's about 40 feet away. Next I'm going to be shooting at Jackson, and I'm about 40 feet away. I have the muzzle turned to the right, I'm going to be aiming at the arrow, and hopefully the balls will curve to the right and hit Jackson. Now I'm about 60 feet away, and I'm going to be shooting at Jackson. I have the muzzle turned to the left, and I'm going to be aiming at the arrow, and hopefully the balls will curve to the left and hit Jackson. I'm about 40 feet away and I have Jackson behind a car and I'm gonna try to curve the rounds around the car to hit Jackson. Now I'm basically taking the same shots, but I put the camera at a different place so you can get a different angle. All right, bros, we're gonna be like as if we're in a Nerf war and I'm gonna be behind these boxes. He's gonna turn the muzzle down and see if he can make the ball go over this and hit me. accuracy of this blaster by shooting this target. All right, now I'm going to test this blaster on Jackson.
All right, pros, before I give you my final thoughts, there's a couple things I want to note. First of all, when you are loading the blaster, you can lock this little slide into place like this. So that's a good thing. Second of all, when the gun does cham, I find it easier to just put my finger there and pull the round out than to actually use the reset button. So now with my final thoughts. First of all, the power of this blaster is excellent. It was shooting over 90 FPS. The range was great. It was shooting around 100 feet. The accuracy was excellent. And I thought this curve thing was cool. For me, my favorite thing about the curve system is when it's down and using it if you want to shoot somebody that's behind cover. And you can shoot over the cover and have it go down and hit them. I do like this curve system and I believe that on every rival blaster they should put a barrel attachment and have this as a barrel attachment. Because why not have the ability to do this if you want to? Another thing I want to note is that this little hop-up flap rubber thing here, when you turn it here, it, it drops down and becomes a little bit longer when it comes here. I would love to see it lock into place at one more level down, like here, and then have that little hop-up thing drop down twice as far. So if you wanted to max out your curve, you can, if it's possible. I was using this as a rear sight and this as a front sight, and it was working fine. It's just that when I would shoot it, I wouldn't shoulder it. I would put it up here, like this. All right, guys, it's shout out time. The first shout out goes to Jay Signs. The next shout out goes to Ben Stanley. The next shout out goes to Nathan Mead. The next shout out goes to Maverick X. The next shout out goes to Jaden Flogging 342. The next shout out goes to JD Vlogs. The next shout out goes to Slicey Boomer. The next shout out goes to Adam Wicked. The next shout out goes to Brianna the Bird. The next shout out goes to Games with Taha. The next shout out goes to Lindsay Anderson. The next shout out goes to Ruka Sarashena. The next shout out goes to Eli. The next shout out goes to King of Ops 3. The next shout out goes to Cute FNAF and Pokemon Fan Animations and Gaming and Vlogs. The next shout out goes to The Gamer Error 101. The next shout out goes to Brandon Van Heerden. The next shout out goes to Ruben Vandenbrink. The next shout out goes to Hyperdude76. The next shout out goes to Kenny Dam. The next shout out goes to Het Gandhi. The next shout out goes to Riley Bricklover. The next shout out goes to Cheetah Gaming. The next shout out goes to Ruby Toys and Fun Toy Reviews. The next shout out goes to Marcus Le Babushka. The next shout out goes to Yin Nguyen. The next shout out goes to Infinator Gaming. The next shout out goes to Shocks. The next shout out goes to Tony. The next shout out goes to Norma Hayat. The next shout out goes to Vlad Papaskew. The next shout out goes to JJYY. The next shout out goes to Jaden Gilman. The next shout out goes to SBSP Loudhouse South Park and Lego Ninjago Fanatic 2004. The next shout out goes to Josh Caudill. The next shout out goes to MC Nuggets. The next shout out goes to Aiden Still. The next shout out goes to Kush Sigobin. The next shout out goes to Sean Chowdhari. 
The next shout out goes to Da Werewolf Crossout. The next shout out goes to Jaden Doge. The next shout out goes to Nikki Kara Cristal. The next shout out goes to Kenny Skeen. The next shout out goes to Amanath Mohammed. The next shout out goes to Antonella Sportelli. The next shout out goes to Kai's Productions. Hey bros, if you want a shout out, then go to the community tab on our channel and go to the most recent post and type, I want a shout out. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell. Be happy, peace out.